So now what are the approaches we have for the sacral plexus block, posterior approach? So can you see the line we have already drawn, the line between the GT and the posterior superior iliac spine. We have already divided this line into medial half and the lateral half. Now I am keeping my probe over the medial half of the line. Understood everyone? So I am keeping the probe over the medial half of the line. Indicator is towards me. I am keeping the indicator towards me. The straight line you are seeing is the ala of the ilium. So this part you are seeing. Everyone clear? So see Im imagine here. This is the GT and this is the posterior superior iliac spine. So line joining between these two divided into half. So medial half I am keeping the probe here. So you are seeing the ala of the ilium. So some muscle above is the gluteus maximus and the below is the medius. You can, you can find superior gluteal vessels in this plane. So now what I have to do is parasacral parallel shift, PSP, parasacral parallel shift. How I will go? I will just go chordomedially from this line. Okay, slowly I will go chordomedially and I will find a gap between the two. Can you appreciate the gap between the two? So medially what I am seeing is the sacrum age or ages of the sacrum or the ending of the ilium and laterally what I am seeing is the ischium. Everyone understood? So when I get the gap just think about this uh, greater sciatic foramen. So laterally we are seeing ischium and medially we are seeing the sacrum after this posterior superior iliac spine. So here can you see two layers of muscles? So the upper one is the gluteus maximus and the lower one, the relatively hypoechoic that is the piriformis muscle. So nerve is lying anterior to the piriformis. This up to this part clear. So now below the piriformis muscle, a honeycomb, oval shaped structure or sometimes you might get triangular structure. So that is your uh, sciatic nerve or the sacral plexus. So if you, if you rotate the probe little, I am rotating, see the hand movement just rotate the probe caudally. Now look at the ultrasound picture. You can see the longitudinal view of the sciatic nerve coming out of the sacral, uh, greater sciatic foramen. So now I am going back to sacral plexus. So you can see the sacral plexus with a pulsatile structure. So what is this one? And you can also see the uh, pulsatile structure in this plane. So what is this one? Can you tell me? The first one, the arrow indicates superior gluteal vessels, very good. And then the, uh, this one indicates inferior gluteal vessels, very good. This is the lateral part, so we will come from the lateral area. So towards the ischium we will come, so that we can avoid direct injury to the vessels. So out uh, in plane technique we will come from here or out of plane we will come from there. Everybody understood this part? So this is known as the Benstein's approach. Benstein's approach advantage is we can see the longitudinal section of the sciatic nerve. Can you see the sciatic nerve coming out? This one. So this is the sacral plexus area and the sciatic nerve is coming out. So we can see the nice drug spread around the sciatic nerve after the deposition of the local anesthetic in Benstein approach. Uh, we can see the segment of the nerve is being soaked with the local anesthetic. So that is the uh, one of the advantage of the Benstein's approach. So beyond this lies the pelvic fascia and beyond that lies the uh, hypogastric vessels or the viscerous, okay. So we can come here and stimulate, get the response and deposit the drug. Instead of coming directly to the sacral plexus or the sciatic nerve, we can target this point the bone so that we can avoid direct injury to the nerve. If we target this point either out of plane from here or in plane from this area, if we just target and deposit the drug, so that will be your parasacral ischial plane block, okay, or parasacral interfacial plane block. This is nothing but the indirect approach of the sacral plexus block or the sciatic nerve block. This was described by Dr. Madan Narayan and Dr. Tulgar simultaneously. This posterior border of the ischium is known as the Tukan Bill's appearance. Okay, Google it. How does it look? Tukan's Bill. So now I am moving to the next approach. That one is the Taha's approach. In Taha's approach, the uppermost part of the anal cleft 
you have to identify and from there 8 centimeter lateral so here almost here everybody understood this part so upper part of the anal cleft and from there 8 centimeter lateral 8 centimeter so here we will keep the probe directly over this point so again indicator is towards me I will directly keep the probe over that point so if you are not able to visualize anything don't worry just go up and get the straight line okay straight line we have already discussed so this is the this is the straight line we are talking about and then you come down again you are seeing this gap so here see the change in the view of the ischium can you see this one so earlier in Bainstein approach this was the view here this is the view so you are seeing the same sacral plexus or the sciatic nerve in cross-sectional view now in Bainstein you are seeing the longitudinal view here you are seeing the cross-sectional view so around 8 centimeter away from the upper part of the gluteal cleft you have to keep the probe if you are not able to visualize anything you just have to go and make that straight line so once you get the straight line then you have to go down and get the area between these two bony landmarks so the middle part you can see the inferior gluteal artery pulsating and the sacral plexus here so here same thing from lateral to medial or the outer plane technique you have to come and deposit this is Taha's approach one more approach I will tell you so from the posterior superior iliac spine and the sacral hiatus we have already drawn these two okay this is sacral hiatus so posterior superior iliac spine and the sacral hiatus join these two now find out the midpoint so midpoint is around here and draw a perpendicular of the same length that is 8 centimeter here draw a perpendicular of same length so this is known as the anyone so join posterior superior iliac spine and the sacral hiatus find out the midpoint and draw a perpendicular of the same length of this line on the midpoint of this two points so that is this is known as Kesel's approach understood everyone so this is known as the Kesel's approach PNS guided also this will be your needle entry point and ultrasound guided also you can see the uh, we have kept probe here in the bendstone approach we have came up to this in, in Taha's approach and now if we can see the probe put the probe here you can see directly so this is known as the Kesel's approach this triangular shaped structure you are seeing this triangular shaped structure so this is probably the sacral plexus we can stimulate and give the drug and if you go down you can see the sciatic nerve is coming out so this is a paraneural space you can see hypoechoic or anechoic space so this part is clear sacral plexus is over so now I am moving on to the GTIT approach so GTIT approach again we will keep the probe over the line joining GT and the ischial tuberosity the indicator is towards me so the structures you are seeing this side this is ischial tuberosity very good this one okay so you have to find in between these two so what is this structure honeycomb appearance along with the pulsatile vessels you can see the pulsatility of the artery inferior gluteal artery here this is the subgluteal approach okay very easy for the PNS as well as the because this area gluteus muscle is thinned out it is coming to an end after this if we move on to the infragluteal space it will be ending so that is why even in obese patient this comes in very handy this position and this approach okay for both PNS and the ultrasound guided so muscle above is the gluteus maximus and the muscle below this one is the quadratus femoris very good from here can you see the nerve if we can trace the nerve longitudinally can you see up to this point you can see I hope so with ultrasound you can see the nerve can you appreciate everyone uh, we are scanning in the longitudinal direction okay so we have reached the GTIT okay look at the that inset picture we have reached the GTIT value so we can block in longitudinal uh, view also so sciatic nerve it's such a big nerve we can we can block in longitudinal view with in plane or outer plane or we can block with the short axis view with in plane or outer plane 
So here, this is the, this is the quadratus, quadratus femoris we have talked about, and in between these two, in between these two, this area, there will be three muscles, one tendon. After piriformis is ending. Yes, you are telling correctly. Tell superior gemelli, okay? Then tendon of obturator internus, okay? Stiff, S T I F. Superior gemelli, gemellus, tendon of obturator internus. Then I for inferior gemellus, and then quadratus femoris. And this is forming the bed for this attic now, okay? After piriformis, this is infra piriformis area or infra piriformis fossa, okay? After GTIT approach, so this was the this was our midpoint between the GT and the IT. So if we can draw a line from this area to this area, so this is known as the sciatic line. Sciatic nerve is supposed to travel along this line. Okay, not true for every patient. So it will be more towards the ischial tuberosity. So among all these approaches, the uh, difficult one to find out or identify is the mid thigh approach. So because we have fixed landmark in the uh, popliteal fossa or popliteal crease, and we have fixed landmark here for identification of the nerve anywhere in the body. We need two fixed landmark. One is the blood vessel, another is the bone. For the upper part, we have landmarks. For the lower part, we have landmark. But here we don't have. If we, if you, if you have noticed, the blood vessels are very small here, not like the femoral one or the arterial canal saphenous nerve block. Okay, or not like brachial plexus. So if we if we keep on moving from here, and if you have seen from the triangular shaped structure, now it has turned into the oval shaped structure. Can you can you notice the one? This one. This is so superficial here. So this was the gluteus muscle here. Now I am coming down. Gluteus almost thinned out. Now what the muscle you are seeing above is the biceps femoris muscle. So indicator is towards me. Uh, this part is the lateral part. So lateral side, you will get the biceps femoris muscle, and uh, beyond the biceps, if you go, you will see the vastus lateralis. And medial side, what you are seeing is the semi tendinosus and the semi membranosus muscle. Uh, semi tendinosus above, membranosus below. What we are seeing here? What is this one? Anyone? See what we are seeing? Arterial canal. This is such a thin fellow. You are seeing the arterial canal from here. You understood? See, the, I am tracing it below. Okay. So this is the adductor magnus. So beyond that, you are seeing the uh, seeing the adductor canal from the posterior side. So now we have reached almost at the level of popliteal crease. We have almost reached uh, seven centimeter or ten centimeter above the popliteal crease. Okay. Here indicator is again towards me. So medial side, you are seeing the yes, very good. Semi tendinosus, semi membranosus. Lateral side, you are seeing the biceps. Okay. So here. This is your sciatic nerve, and you have to find out the popliteal vessels. You can see the vessels here. If we keep on scanning, just above the uh, popliteal crease, it is dividing or diverging. Can everyone appreciate here? So at this point, you can perform the popliteal fossa block. Okay, in between the two, you can approach. So now we, I will move on to the anterior approach. So indicator is towards me. That is lateral. Can you see the nerve now? So here, what are the structures we have to see? These three muscles. What are these three muscles? Longus brevis magnus. Very good. Okay. This muscle, sartorius, above the uh, superficial femoral vessels. There is a sartorius. Okay. And here, you will see the profunda femoris artery. That is the deeper structure. Branches from the medial and the lateral ascending branches. You can find here. And beyond this, beyond the nerve, this area is by the biceps femoris and the semi tendinosus tendons and muscles will come. Here you can come out of plane from this area. This area is relatively vessel free. This area means medial side, but needle manipulation might be difficult. Here, if you come in plane, so this area. Their profunda femoris vessels or their branches, ascending branches from the medial and the lateral. It will lies here, so you might puncture those vessels along with the pun. Uh, there is a possibility of puncturing this uh, superficial femoral vessels, and uh, there will be the inferior gluteal vessels here. 
So here also with ultrasound guided, you can block here and then withdraw the needle and block the saphenous or the femoral nerve on lateral side. So two blocks you can perform at a time or you can come out of plane from here to here. So now at this point, if we rotate the probe in 90 degrees, can you see the long cable like structures? So if you are having difficulty in identification of the sciatic nerve because there are lots of muscles coming before the nerve. If you have that difficulty, so you can confirm the nerve with the longitudinal scan. So in this view, you can see the nerve along with the nice paraneural space. Everybody understood? So you can scan above and below. You can see the entire screen is uh, filled with the sciatic nerve. This is the nerve, okay? Along with the paraneural space, you can see. So in this view also, you can insert the needle and block here. Okay, everyone? So I am ending now. Any questions you have, you can ask me. Uh, one important point is always do a scout scan, put on color Doppler before attempting to block. And uh, second point is always use dual guidance for proximal approaches. It is better to use dual guidance because lots of tendons are coming in between, coming along with the nerve. So, it might look similar, so we don't know whether we are actually blocking the sciatic nerve or depositing the drugs next to the tendon. There is no shame in using PNS along with the ultrasound guided technique. Okay? It will ensure your sciatic nerve block as well as increase the success rate and the decrease the complication rates. That's all from my side. If you want to ask any questions, 